Hello everybody, welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel, I am Addiction Master on most social media. Today I'm going to be talking about Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Right off the bat, I really enjoyed this movie, and maybe it's the, you know, place I'm in in this fucking life, but there were a couple of things that annoyed me, but overall, fun romp. Just not as, um, um, con well, it's very connected, but it just didn't have the weight that I thought it was going to have for the ramifications of things. Other than that, you just got a real fun movie directed by Sam Raimi, um, written by Michael Walden, Waldron, starring Benedict Cumberbatch, Elizabeth Olsen, Chiu Wattel, Ijo 4. <laughs> Benedict Wong. There's two Benedicts in this movie. There's got to be some Lorg. Oh, it's overseas, maybe. Zochi Gomez, Michael Solberg, Rachel Adams. Well, first off, you've got a good feel for what a company does with a franchise that has their formula and is looking to replace a director. Because I think this movie had a director signed on beforehand and they left creative differences one of those things i'm not sure and just like any other big franchise company type thing there's going to be you know suits and stuff making up decisions but they decided to go with sam raimi and this is a really great way of showing a personality a characteristic of a director who what he's known for and blending it in with the marvel universe perfect no other Character in Doctor Strange, uh, obviously, no, there are a couple other in the whole Marvel Universe and even DC, Dead Man and a whole bunch of things, but it's Sam Raimi's um, wheelhouse and it adds a flavor to the Marvel Cinematic Universe that's um, refreshing in a way because although as psychedelic as the first, I do enjoy the first one, I have a podcast on it you can listen to, and I do enjoy, or I did enjoy very much the WandaVision show. This movie highlights Sam Raimi's ability to just play around with uh, the things he's known for, his style, and fit the story within the universe pretty well. You could see that this is a continuation from Doctor Strange, the movie, and also WandaVision. They did a little bit of a twisty with the trailer, and I think it's really smart. Don't show too much, don't give away everything, and let it play out, so that worked. And you've got this uh, growth of characters in it and an actual pacing to the movie that is not boring and fucking mundane nonsense. Yeah, it might not be your movie. This might be something you're not into. But there's no way that this is a, a boil fest of epic proportions. You just got a fun Doctor Strange sequel which ties in stuff from another character, adding into the MCU. How they're doing this is really amazing. When you look at the TV show, I did a podcast on that also, WandaVision. And I talk about how risky and dangerous it was and almost off-putting the first three episodes of that show were. And now looking back on it, it is one of my favorite shows they have, they've done. A Disney TV show, if you want to call it. And you're blending it into the movies now, and you did it really good i'm really surprised at that i wasn't sure what was going to happen including some stuff from the cartoon because they got the what if cartoon and they allude to a lot of things and it's a connective tissue that's not too heavy driven with dialogue and, and you know it's mixed in with the snarkiness of dr strange and the goings-on of the new character and integrating this i guess new premise into the movies you've got one character who is able to travel the multiverse. And apparently, from what we can tell, there's only one of her. So, when you look at other characters, you'll notice there's other Doctor Stranges, there's other spider Mans, and things like that. There's only one of her, America Chavez. And I enjoyed her in the movie. Not overdone too much, not too... Um, like, I had a problem with uh Shang-Chi movie. 
where I liked the actress when she was doing it. It got, went a little too overboard with the I'm um, going to be a sidekick zaniness and save the day. This felt more earned and more of a struggle uh, psychologically with the character and what's going on and how they're feeding it in. And then as you got this going on, it's quickly revealed what is the what's behind this and then you're like okay and it becomes this fun ride i'm a big fan of sam Raimi, of his uh older stuff some newer stuff even some stuff that are isn't too popular and it's one of those david lynch maybe type things where you know you're a huge fan of twin peaks and some of the things he's done but as a body of work he's, he's an outlier to what you know what steven spielberg would be or you know things like that so you're caught up in the movie, like I said, you're, you're coming out of Doctor Strange 2 and you're intertwining the premise of Loki because you started with Loki, I don't know, breaking, I guess, spawning the multiverse and then you see the ramifications in the What If cartoon and you're bringing that into this. R really fun. Fun. Connective tissue growth of characters an actual for opening middle act and that actually has a couple of twists but that don't just make all the characters irreverent and irrelevant and um I, like i said this is the praise coming from a fan of sam raimi a fan of the marvel cinematic universe giving it above bar praise meaning like uh, yeah i'll I'll give some movies aren't as good as others, but you can you don't got a, a run of shit movies or maybe you have a run of formulas you don't like. You know, I'm fine with that. Um, this is a a real fun ride for me to go journey with them through this movie and feel kind of absorbed in it and wondering what's going to come next. Even though I had a feeling, and I'll get to a couple of the things that annoyed me, but that's just me. Uh, the music was superb, the cinematography, the way it was shot, just eye candy for a lot of reasons, especially if you're a fan of Doctor Strange, the comic, his history, his origins, and the comic, he was so powerful back in the day, going through these dimensions, and to see it continue here well, and then putting Sam Raimi's twist on it, was really fun. Um, I can see this being one of those movies, though. Uh, that people aren't going to trash that much, but they're just going to say, uh, you know, I rolled my eyes, this is silly for me. Fine, you know, I'll take a silly, fun romp any day if it's done well. Now, saying that the music was spot on and cinematography, the movie went in directions that I didn't want it to go, and again, is that voice in my head? I started saying, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> and it, it really is a spoiler reveal, but I'll just say it in a way, they highlighted uh, characters again. I'm happy they did it in the trailer. I really want them to not give away too much and not put all the best action scenes in it and bullshit me, but mislead me in certain areas so I don't come in knowing everything and predicting everything. It's a balance, I guess, to be had. Um, looking at it again, you know, you look at this actor. He seems to have fun with it. And when you blend everything together, I've maybe talked about this once in a while, like how hard is it to make a movie? What moving parts, how many people are on it? Personalities, bad days, good days. I, I can't imagine just going through life normally and these are fucking actors, right? So fuck them. Let them go through their hardships. And just thinking about where the movie would go, I start thinking... Like, is this the character, the actor saying, let's go in this direction, let's make it this? I am i don't know, but when when they put these people in the movie and there's a secret thing going on, it was really set up for the main villain's powers to show where they were. It, it, so it was a little, you know, anticlimactic for me. But you're looking at characters coming from the cartoon uh captain peggy carter you had black bolt um a different captain marvel they showed reed richards now i really wanted them to get the old actor but i guess they're going in a direction which is fine and professor xavier this is a spoiler 
but it's in the trailer. Yes, there's elements of that that are really cool, but I think wasted. And I just wound up going, okay, I guess. Um, the love thing was not too heavy handed, but it was just a reminder of Stranger Things. But I thought it could have been done a little better. But nothing that overpowers the movie, nothing that steers it in the direction of um, inevitable boredom or nonsense or just, you know, let's throw fake blood and everything at the screen. There's some charm here and even the things I didn't like. So I think it's more decision things that bother me. Like you did this for this reason, that for that reason. Obviously, we're going to have a, a third movie or a tie-in from some other source. You never know what'll happen before that with Thor. Maybe that'll add something to this mix. I'm excited to see where it goes. And I wasn't even... To show you how distant I am from a lot of these things, I really didn't even remember Sam Raimi was directing it. Which is mind-blowing. Like, I'm a big fan. And, and as I'm getting ready to watch, I'm like, holy shit, this is a Sam Raimi movie. Like, just even in the trailers and stuff, it never clicked in my head. I was not going into it thinking even that it was my favorite director or you know, one of my favorites, you know, maybe it's John Carpenter. But looking at it again, I think this is a superb movie in the franchise. It's not going to be for everybody. And I don't think Sam Raimi's movies are. But when you have the... You know, the ship being righted by these people. Maybe their suits or not. They know their formula. I think it's going to be pretty successful. Like, I try to make this point a lot that I'm really not that hard to please with superhero movies. I'm a nerd. I'm a fanboy. I'm like an 18, 19, maybe more long box sleeves of comics in my house. I role play. I play mobile, I Amalgam Universe of all the superheroes. If you don't do what I like to do, or what I, what I want to see happen, do what you're going to do, but do it well. And this is an example of that. I'm going to get, there are parts in here that I totally disagree with. I do not want to, I didn't want to see them happen. Because I wanted something else to come from it. I wanted a, a different, you know, um, legacy left behind of what was going on. And I'll leave it at that. There's a charm to the movie. There's a... Um, a growth to the movie that is apparent. Like, even if they take little steps and don't beat you over the head with it, it maybe yeah, it can be lost in the shuffle. But they make sure they hit moments where you feel, oh, this is a moment where you know, like, you learn something and you, you grow, you, you know something about yourself. And that's important for characters. Like, how many fucking years did... Downey Jr. play Iron Man. And, like, he's Iron Man. Like, he can't do nothing no more. It's so hard. Like, this is Benedict Cumberbatch's staple on Doctor Strange from his tie-ins to the other cinematic movies to now his second movie. He's excellent. If you're having fun with it, too, like, I can imagine interviews that I didn't do yet. I didn't go through, like, other people's um, opinions on this yet. And that's kind of like what I do. If, if if I know something's coming and I'm getting ready to watch it, I'll I'll avoid things and then uh, if I can watch something twice, that would be preferable. But then I shot down my own little things and then after I publish this and like upload it or, you know, get it ready, I start looking around to see what other people's ideas. So I'm not even sure what people think it is. Um like I said, when you when you start this movie and it's got a plot, it's moving along. It's uh uh, it's, at times it's a roller coaster, but proper one with the right bends and dips. Like <clears throat> you were clever enough that you revealed the cleverness and didn't think we were stupid because it's a real charming way of exposing what's really going on. And I thought it was, you know, it was like okay, this is this has to be my fucking luck, right? Um. I'll give a little bit, is like, well, first off, Doctor Strange is not the Sorcerer Supreme because he was dusted for five years. That whole premise of keeping that, I always thought it was a mistake. To this day, I think it's a mistake that they didn't rectify the five-year gap. I just think it's a, 
something they left in to just do whatever the fuck they want to do for certain reasons. I don't know. But it doesn't make sense to me. There's this five-year gap, so he's not the thing. This little charming thing about him bowing to Wong, who's the legitimate source of Supreme, and it's really not bothered with until that it's paid off at the end. And you're like, okay. And the cleverness about what's going on, because America Chavez shows up with a Doctor Strange corpse. Uh, well, actually, it shows from the trailer, uh, America Chavez, the young lady with the jean jacket, uh, trying to get to an artifact or a book or a device, and they get attacked by a demon. She opens up a power. She uses her powers, opens up a portal, comes to Earth, and immediately Doctor Strange is our Doctor Strange, six sixteen, nerd, and it looks like um, he gets drawn into this right away and looks to find help, and then it's he goes to get help and. It just starts the movie in this uh, real fun way. Great to see actors being able to promote uh, a side of their characters that you don't normally see. I mean, when I look back on the growth of Scarlet Witch, I think it's insanely good. Like, even if it's not your thing, like they do this shit in the comics all the time, and that's not an excuse, but you got a character from the beginning who's been conflicted. Um, Whoever well, dies in the Avengers Ultron movie. Going through it, then you got WandaVision, and she's the fucking Scarlet Witch. They even make a device for that, with the Darkhold book. Tie all this thing together with a fun romp. Some really, really unique things for Sam Raimi style, where he's able to use that and bring it out. And I, there's a part in this movie where I had the biggest smile on my face. And it's the stupidest scene. It might be one of the stupidest scenes ever. They come up with this concept. Because you know, these are mages and magic users fighting each other. And they set up this whole scene for a music magic battle. And it made me smart. My face hurt after. I didn't, like, I almost didn't know... I was so caught up in the moment. And this happened to me with uh, the Thor movie. I say that to this day. The best use of a song is the Led Zeppelin song in the Thor movie. And I describe it as, I forgot to breathe. Like, I was so caught up in the moment. I didn't recognize, like, I was even breathing. And... It works so well. Like there's a the moment in this movie where I, I think it's Doctor Strange going to another Doctor Strange to get answers, or for some reason he's he has to see it, find another Doctor Strange in, in a sense. And the whole room has like musical equipment and notes are being played, and again. You put me into seven years old Joe getting his first comic book or six years old, whatever it was. And this is the moment I felt in the Spider-Man movie where all the Spider-Men are talking to each other and you see Toby. Like, there are moments that you can feel the love is put through. And I'm not going to keep alluding to it because this is a movie I just recently did a fucking um, podcast on that seems to be getting so many fucking views and comments. Um, you gotta give me something to hold on to. You gotta give me a couple of things that take me a moment to realize I'm watching a movie or, you know, how I'm, I'm so connected to my childhood. It's that feeling of wonder that I don't, you know, you got me. <clears throat> and maybe you could say that's a flaw too, because that makes me like Green Lantern, let's say, when I know it's a bad movie. I'm not here going to debate how good the movie I just happen to like it. So it is that balance, too, is recognizing this movie is not a masterpiece of masterpieces. And I would say, arguably, objectively, that it is a very good movie. But it makes things that, makes decisions that I wouldn't make that kind of irk me, in a way. Not in a bad way, but, like I said, you don't have to do what I want to do if I could be, you know honest enough to recognize that flaw in me, but just do it well. 
So kudos to, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch and Elizabeth Olsen. What a show they put on. She's, um, Elizabeth Olsen's really come into her own with this character. You know, showing the progress is just, it's, um, it's awesome to see on the screen. And I wish it could be done in other genres or other genres, other companies. <sighs> you know, fun time in this fucking movie. Take me away to another place. Let me just forget things and be absorbed. And yes, medicated Skittles could have helped. But, um, you know, I'm not constantly reminded of the things that, you know, I didn't agree with. Like, if I notice a trend that Doctor Strange is, whatever, using the F word all the time. Like, well, some director came in decided to make Doctor Strange a potty mouth, you know. If it wasn't for a reason and it's overdone, I'm going to disagree with it. And if I'm constantly reminded throughout the movie, it's, it's going to be another thing. And I think that's another problem, like. This Boardman movie, the Batman movie that came out, that Catwoman in that movie, like, you could see her in five movies. Like, just a thread that connects the movies, in a sense. Like, the quality, say, like, the actors aren't shit. Well, I don't know about the main actor, but you'd like to see that. I mean, where do we get this? Maybe we get this in Alfred's? Like, maybe they were fucking Alfred's? Anyway, not to shit on uh, the DC movies, but Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, in my opinion, is a very good to excellent movie, one I love because of certain reasons. It hits the marks for me. It shows the potential and power of, you know, uh, certain people or characters we've seen throughout the Marvel Universe. It's a connective tissue without being too... Over the head, you over the head with it. It's got enough br- breadth of unique um, aspects to it that you, you know, you just throw everything in the first Doctor Strange movie. You make everything kaleidoscopes and whatever. You gotta have some substance there. You gotta have the character that you know you're pulled into. And it's, Doctor Strange is new, and we're watching Scarlet Witch. And by the way, the even the uh, co-stars like the. Um, uh, what was that? Rachel McAdams. Um, it's a character from the other movie, and he's supposed to like have a relationship with her. And it's like something that's brought up in the movie as she's in it. And at the end, I'm like, wow, you know, they didn't really beat me over the head. They didn't throw it, shove it down my throat. And it, you know, it lets the other parts of the movie breathe properly and hit the right beats. Ah, you know. I talk about the uh, John Wick movies too, like, that first John Wick movie is amazing, I love it. The, the next two are fucking, you know, a trailer, it's just, you know, nonsense, like, you missed the, what made the character grow, what attached me to the character, and this is continuing to make me care more about the Doctor Strange, and the Scarlet Witch, right? I mean, I, again, okay. So I wanted to see Vision in the movie. I'm going to give away what some of the mid to after scene credit scenes are, but there is a you know little Easter egg here and there. But I kind of wanted um, one of these multiverses to show the new Vision because at the end of the Wanda Vision show, Vision is uh, the white all white version of himself, like a duplicate we created, and he's out there, and he kind of merged with the Oh, how, God, how do you, the Wanda created Vision from her show, it's it's complicated, but he was a, you know, he was put together by her power, and when the white one was created from the remnants of his body that the government used, they merged and they so the vision wouldn't be a, a, a bad guy just to an extent, but you never saw the ramifications of that. And maybe you'll see that in an Avengers movie, but I thought that would be cool here. I thought that might be a great way to insert it. So that was the direction it didn't go. The quote unquote Illuminati was another issue I had with it. Great to see the characters and I had a big smile on my face, but 
you know, roll my eyes to see where it went and a missed opportunity, but you can rectify these things easily. It's a multiverse. It's a right. So you are looking at almost a surefire way of having a cake and eating it too, which is really eating your cake and having it too. I think that's the way it's supposed to be. You could do things people don't agree with. Call it a formula, call it a criteria, a standard, whatever. In my opinion, the Marvel movies, uh, they have it. Maybe it's Kevin Feige or some, you know, other higher-ups that, you know, kind of see this formula put together, but I don't see real bad movies. I don't feel um, dread at the mention of a movie that's coming out. Um, I'm fucking so excited to see the Thor movie and fuck all these people. You know, there are, there are people you love, too, and respect in the sense of watching them on YouTube or their opinions on things. And they'll have um, a big two-hour conversation about how they're pushing the woman aspect in the Marvel movies or whatever fucking cancel culture, fucking blah, blah. And it's so ridiculous. It's so fucking stupid because do it well. I, they don't notice it. Yeah, that's the thing. I think if you don't do it well, it, it kind of gets lost. But when you look for it, you know, I'm so hyped to see Natalie Portman as fucking female Thor. I fucking am hyped. It could be a shitty movie. Look, anything could happen, but it's good to see this. I am really pleased by the product they put out, and I wish it was spread out to all of it because I'd love to say I like the uh, Vin Diesel movie based on that character with the nanobots that recreate, you know, like a regeneration, and the DC movies, and even some of these offshoot things. I gotta go and find like a Burn Bright movie about quote unquote like a Superman kid who's evil. You find these little gems everywhere. And then, look, uh, I'm getting ready to watch the Peacemaker show, which I'm really excited about, which is sprung from a movie that's not even that good. I've um, never been a fan of either Suicide Squad movies, although I did the podcast and I enjoyed the second one as just a fun thing, but. You know, it's someone saying, you know, fuck it, let's just go overboard. A little too much, in my opinion. And like I said again, this is a multiverse of stuff. You got other characters you can spring in. You can bring anybody back. You can correct mistakes. You could add more trouble just from the fact that it's out there. Because fucking Loki's going to show up one day again with some mischief if it's not a TV show. And Kang who's been alluded to, who might be an Ant-Man villain type thing. I'm excited. This is still an ongoing Phase 4 Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's unheard of. And it's unheard of also for the fact that the TV shows tie in and are doing really well. You know how much fun I had watching Hawkeye? Fucking fun. How good... Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier was. And even if I say that my, in my opinion, the Loki one was the weakest, still enjoyed getting through it. It wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't like 22 episodes of getting to Supergirl, which I love as a TV show, but just it's too much. I can't, I don't like that formula. And if it's done well for people, it's, it's amazing. So kudos for fucking all those shows doing well for years. Look at Smallville. 11 fucking years, whatever the fuck it was, 10? Look, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Men, this is a fun movie on its own, without any connective tissue. You don't have to know anything about all these characters. Done well enough to give you enough without beating you over the head, show some character growth. Yeah, they didn't do all the things I would have done or would have liked to see left hanging without... All the mystery taken away, right? Because you took away the mystery of this certain part. Other than that, I mean, wow. Lots of fun. Like I said, there's that one scene I'll always remember now from Doctor Strange. Just like I call out the Thor Ragnarok use of the Led Zeppelin song. There's a scene in this movie where 
it's a battle of mages, and they're using these magical instrument sounds. The sound, everything just sucked me in like I was sucked into a vacuum, and I transitioned between dream and waking up. I, I, I didn't almost know. I was so happy in the moment. So, great, great scene. Kudos to everybody in that, um, for that idea. And like I said, this is balanced, I guess. I'm not in the industry of suits in a room. People who know how to make money, who know what they're doing, but they don't know about movies or what fans are going to like. And I think Marvel's got the good formula. I don't care. Is this trend going to end? Look, make more movies. Put out fucking newspapers or magazines. Try to reinvigorate the fucking paper industry. Or whatever the fuck you're going to do. Uh, in the back of the uh, things, it was going to be Spider-Man. Look, make movies good. That's the first step. And I think that's super important. And then if I like what you're doing, I'm going to praise it and you know, still point out the stupid things that made me fucking eyes roll. Well, this movie's got a lot of the Sam Raimi flavor, if you're into that. Just a fun ride of, you know, that zombie undeadness is there, and there's a legit reason to use it. And even when he... Okay, so, there's a danger in using the Darkhold, which is this evil spell book of dreamwalking, where you can dreamwalk into another world another universe, and control them, uh, another aspect of you while they dream. And I think it could be anybody, like you can puppet their body while they're sleeping. Okay. And the danger's there, and when it's ultimately up to Dr. Strange to decide if he's going to do it, because it's like this hypocrisy thing that's actually really funny in the movie. It's like, you know, I think it's in the trailer, where Wanda's like, you know, I do this, and I'm a villain, you do it, and you're a hero. So, it's, you know, it's smart. It's, you know, and it's said in a great way, the way it's put over on the film, right? So, it's one thing to have a cool idea for a scene where you're going to set up the hypocrisy of being a hero and a villain, and how, you know, like, I guess Batman in that way, a vigilante, like, where do you fall in? And to have it expressed by the characters in the movie and done so well, that's a, that's a, you know, that's a triumph, in my opinion. And to have it with actors who can pull it off, it's like, um, uh, so one of Dr. Strange's, like, pitches to get Wanda to help him is, you know, you could be on the lunchbox again. Now, <laughs> I don't even know if lunchboxes are even a thing anymore, but I immediately... Fucking immediately went to every lunchbox I had with Batman, Scooby-Doo, Superman, Spider-Man. I mean, just lunchboxes in school where you mom made you a bologna sandwich or something, a ham and cheese because the lunch sucked and whatever. And you had your little pudding thing, whatever. I mean, I was born in 1971. Lunchboxes were a fucking thing. Your baseball cards were in there with your bubble gum. It's just, you don't hear it no more. Like, but this is a Sam Raimi flavor, or the people who love the movie, they know the audience, perhaps. And, you know, that I grew up with the giants. I have a giant sized Doctor Strange in my room. And it's huge. And it's psychedelic like, and all interdimensional travel stuff. Awesome stuff. So I'm going to praise Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Um, I'm not going to say it's a super masterpiece, but it is a superb movie. Really well done. Growth of character. Music, cinematography, the way it comes together. The acts that are real fucking segments of a movie. A little bit of a twist and the eye-rolling, you know, antics of what's going on. And a pretty interesting new character that wasn't overdone and beat over the head. Um, you know, the path of the Marvel Universe, it feels weighted, it feels that it's there, and that's why one of my gripes as I end this is that it didn't have the impact I thought it would have on the shape of the multiverse. 
obviously you can still do things, but I thought it was going to be more focused on certain areas. And that's really it. You subverted my expectations and all that nonsense shit. I'm going to recommend Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I am definitely going to recommend it wholeheartedly if you're a fan of Sam Raimi. This is a superb, a well done movie with his little flavor on it. And yes, I'm not going to sit here and argue with people that don't like the movie. But I think it's a given that it's done well. And I guess I'll end that here. I hope everybody's doing well. Take care of you and yours. Till next time. Bye-bye.